Hello, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whenever you are joining us today. Welcome to the la- the final installment of What is Faith right here on Restoration Bible Fellowship. This was recorded live at City View Church of God in Dalton, Georgia back in May. Hope it's been a blessing to you. Stay tuned at the end of the podcast. We'll give you information on how you can get your own personal copy. I'm looking forward to finishing out this series and going back to Hebrews. Let's go to the service. Or all, whatever else you can come up with. Well, the doctor said that I should be taking these pills. Let me tell you about pills. A few years ago, my, uh, I had some family members that wanted me on the ADHD medicine. Don't do it. And because I was trying to be submissive to those in authority over me, I, I took the medicine. And I realized that I now could not access parts of my brain, which I enjoyed those parts of my brain. So I decided, self, I don't need these. So self took himself off the drugs. And a nurse in our church, she says, you'll have a psychotic episode. No, I will not. Because what's living on the inside of me is going to take care of what's going on on the outside of me. And then I'm not going to be no cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs moment. <laughs> so the, the whole point becomes, she heard, she says, okay, if I can just get to Jesus... All I got to do is grab hold of the hem of his garment. You understand that an act of faith is not what you do this big. Let me just grab hold of the tassel on the the bottom of his robe. Because he had had on, he would be a Jew, it should have been tassels. Then she committed herself to the action. Here's the problem with many people in church. God, whatever you want me to do, I'm going to do it. And he tells you, but that. I want you to go shake hands with that dear brother or sister over there and let them know that you love them. Well, I don't. Have you smelled them? Uh Uh-uh. I want you to go visit them in their house. Uh Uh-uh. They got a Rottweiler. I'm terrified of dogs. I'm not. I'd love on it, but that's just me. We start telling God what what, what we're willing to do, but not what he wants us to do. She goes, okay, I'm going to get to him however I need to. Well, I can't walk right up because everybody's, I'm going to crawl on the ground. Now, if you read this story, they were all crowded around here. She probably got stepped on, kicked, cussed at, spit on, fill in the blank, until she got to where she needed to be. She believed what she said. If I touch his garment, I'll be healed. She grabbed hold. Now you understand, Peter's question, although they are called the duh disciples, his question wasn't as dumb as we make it. He got, when Jesus says, who touched me? Everybody was probably touching him, wanting to just, he goes, mm-mm, somebody touched me. Because somebody touched me in a way that the Father just went ahead and responded and let anointing go out of me. And he looks around and she's afraid. He goes, daughter, be of good cheer. Your, ah, oh, wait, so let me get this straight, Dr. Stansbury. You're saying that if I will just do what the Word says and believe that God's who He says He is and He can do what He says He can do, I can have my miracle? Absolutely. But here's where we get into trouble. We have this thing that's about one inch below our nose that has a mind of its own. It says, a lot of times, has your mouth ever went off and your brain's going, I, mm, I wouldn't have said that. You ever said something and realized about 30 seconds, I really should not have said that. That's why when Paul says in 2 Corinthians 4 and 13, he goes, we have this spirit of faith that says this, I have believed, therefore I've spoken, so I believe what I speak. When every time Abraham called his name, when it went from Abram to Abraham, 
Hashem means the name. So God stuck his name in the middle of Abraham. So as she talked about breathing out of his lungs, every time Sarah called Abraham's name, she was saying, you're going to be the father of many nations. And every time he called Sarah, he's going, yeah, and you're going to be their mama. So hang on, Heffa, here we go. Every time they called each other's name, they reminded each other of the promise that God, some of you have not, hang on, don't shout me down when I'm preaching good, that some of you need to hear this. When you start claiming what God has already written down, every time you remind God of that promise, you remind Him you're, you're His child, that He's promised you these things in His Word, and you're going to stand right here until the blessing comes, or you're going to be like Jacob, I'm going to keep fighting and wrestling until you bless me. The Bible says that forever in heaven, God's word is settled. In other words, when Jesus said, it is finished. (laughs) See, here's what you need to understand. When he walked out of the tomb, twirling the devil's keys... Roman soldiers falling out. And he appears to John and he says these words. John, I am he that was alive. I was dead. And I live forevermore. Oh, and John, look what I have. I have the keys of death and of hell and of the grave. The thing that scares the human race the most, death and the grave, Jesus said, I got those keys. So let me help you out. If you die, your last step here is your first step there. And and that's when you know you're home. You see, we keep waiting for God to do something in the sweet by and by pie in the sky. He goes, but you can have steak on the plate if you're willing to wait. Isaiah 55 and verse 11 says this, So my words that be that go forth out of my mouth, it will not return to me void without producing any effect or useless, but it shall accomplish that which I please and purpose, and it shall prosper for the thing for which I sent it. You say, well, brother, this sounds like that confession stuff. You confess. Exactly. But I'm not telling you to confess for a BMW. I'm not telling you to confess for a house on the snooty side of town. I'm telling you to confess for the things that you need. When the Bible says that it is sharper than any two-edged sword, you need to understand that there the two words, there's a lot of words, okay, in any other language but the English language. One word means one word. Right? We say love, but in Greek you got four or five words that mean love and what that which words you choose to use is what definition with what you're working with. When I used to teach middle school, I'd have these seventh graders look at you go, I love you to this little seventh grade other person, the other little person go, I love you too. That was Monday. By Wednesday they broke it up because they had a fight at the skating rink. By Friday they in love with somebody else and they can't even spell it. I love, you know, you know. In the Greek, you have graphia for word, and that means written word. Graphia, graphics, where we get the same. What's been written? Logos is God's spoken word. That's also this. Oh, see, some of you are going, huh? And men wrote as they were born along by the Holy Spirit. God, it means the word inspired. God breathed and said, I need you to write this stuff down. And they went, yes, sir. So the word of God, it's written, but he wants you to receive it as his spoken word. With me so far. That's one side of the blade, the logos, the, the written, spoken word of God. But the other word is rhema. It means active, right now word. Let me tell you how that works. The devil shows up. To Jesus. 
Jesus, if, if you're the Son of God and you're hungry, make these stones bread. And he stood back looking smug. Jesus, who not only do the word, but he is the word, said, mm -mm, it is written. There's this right now word, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. A right now word is that scripture that comes to your mind when you need it. That's when you need to speak it. You didn't hear me. When that scripture comes to your mind, that's when you need to speak it. When that scripture comes, say this with me. When the scripture comes to mind, speak it. When the devil comes reminding you about all your sicknesses and your problems, go, I don't know if you've read this or not yet, big boy. But in Peter, this is what I was told, that by his stripes I was healed. So I'm going to keep hanging on to the was healed, but it means it's already been done. And I'm going to laugh in your face when I get my healing. Well, well your, your loved ones are lost. and da, 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 da. Oh, but wait a minute. Joseph gave prophecy saying, don't leave my bones in Egypt. What that means is, when even if I die, my children are not going to stay in Egypt. They're going to come out. Now, they, I may be dead, me sitting in glory, but one day they're going to come walking through the same golden streets that I'm on and go, Mom, Dad, look, even though you died, your prayers stayed behind and something happened. You see, until you get to the place you quit quoting CNN and ABC and Fox or the latest uh, talking head on the TV and start living and quoting this, you're not going to see a change. But when you look the devil in the eye and say, It is written. Tonight, some of you have come to church, and I, and I can tell by your worship. I, I try to sit back and watch worship because I try to get a feeling for the hearts of the people that are there. Let me tell you what I mean. If the praise team is up there for entertainment, I'm pretty 99.999% sure nobody's out in the congregation worshiping. They enjoy in the show. But if the praise team is in worship and the people people are in worship, I know that people have come hungry for God to do something. The way hunger works in God's economy, the more of Him you get, the more hungry for Him you get. Not like in the world's economy, the less food you eat, the more hungry you get. In God's economy, the more of His bread that you eat, the more of Him you want. Jesus said, those that hunger and thirst after righteousness, I'll fill them. If you seek first my kingdom, everything else, I'll add it. But yet, we'll walk out of here. The enemy will meet us outside in the parking lot and start doing all of this talking. Here's the choice you have. You can open your car door and say, well, get in the back seat. Let's go home. Or you can say, you know what? I heard tonight, devil, where Jesus said that you are the father of all lies. And that if you're running around my life, you're only coming into my life to do one of three things. To kill, to steal, or destroy. So since I know that's your plan, can I just tell you what I found out tonight? That Jesus said... That he is the truth. And if I would know the truth, the truth sets me free. And not only that, and, and they say on those television commercials, but wait, there's more. And he's coming to my life that I might live life and live it more abundantly. And so you can take all, that, that, all of this you got working and go find somebody else. Because let me tell you right now, I know my Redeemer cares. I know, oh, what a Savior. Oh, I don't know. Mark Lowry sang a song one time. I don't know what a sinner you were, but I know what a Savior he is. I need some of you to walk out of here tonight and stop saying this mess. I'm just an old sinner saved by grace. Uh-uh, baby, let me help you out. You are the righteousness of Christ. You are a child of the king you have been redeemed you have been redeemed from the curse and everything the enemy has, has said about you is a lie yes. 
So what I want us to do, we're going to go to prayer. And I don't know what your needs are. Here's the beauty of it. God never called me to have to know your needs because He knows your needs. He knows my needs. But when you come up for prayer, I want you to do something different. Don't come and talk about how bad or big your need is. Because we all can agree we got them. Amen? But I want you to bring your mountain, and imagine now your mountain's about the size of a rock. And we're going to agree, and we're going to introduce your mountain to your God. And here's what you're going to do. You're going to speak what you believe and then believe that you have it. Okay, see, some of you are going, let me try this side. You're going to speak what you believe, and then you're going to believe that you have it, and you're going to walk out claiming it. Now, you say, what if it don't happen right then? Okay. One illustration, I'm going to call, we're going to start prayer. Jesus had a blind man. He did his thing. He asked the blind man, what do you see? Well, I see men in shadows. Come on. Jesus had to get him out of town because the town was so full of unbelief. You see, he had to get the man out of town and to get the town out of the man. You hear what I'm saying? Leave all that stinking thinking somewhere else and go, okay, let me get out of the town and let the town get out of me. And then when Jesus, he goes, I see it all. So when we pray tonight, leave your burden here. Leave it. If you have to act like you're carrying something, lay it on the altar and leave it. Here's what many of us do. We'll lay it on the altar. We'll shake everybody's hand. Praise God. Might need this later. I might need something to complain about tomorrow, so let me go and get this back so I can complain. You know why many people never get their healing? Because they complain about it rather than praising God for what's happening. Well, my, my dad was the word. I love my dad. My dad's gone on. And you know, somebody, I, I love my dad to death. But he would absolutely glory in his infirmities. Son, whew, I think his back going to kill me. And it did. Um, uh, he always talked about how bad he was hurting. I would hate to go to family reunions because they would compare who was hurting the worst. I had an aunt. Well, my shoulder hurts when I do this. And I have a, well, mine hurts if I just, and I'm not going, oh, my gosh. Oh, I sat down too fast, stood up too fast. I'm a, then don't move. They would compare who had the most prescriptions. When I had an aunt that died, I promise you, I think we closed out CVS by what we had to return. But they would go to church and go up for prayer, but then walk off and keep claiming what they had. If you want to claim something, claim what God's already said. You may not see a harvest tonight, may not see it for a month. Here's what will happen. When a farmer plants a seed, he has really no idea how all that... Now, we can go through the science, and my wife is a kindergarten teacher. She can go through the whole uh, seed life of a plant. We can make a little miniature greenhouse, and we can watch the plant. We can see how that happens. But really, when that seed goes in the ground, God says, I just need to give it air, water, and nutrients, and it grows. Gee, the Holy Spirit is called the pneuma, the breath of God. There's the air. Jesus said, if you will come to me out of your belly, will flow rivers of living water. There's the water. He said, what is the soil? There is no other foundation that a man can build except his ways in Christ Jesus. Jesus said, the man that hears my words and does them. He is like the wise man that built his house on solid ground. And when the storms came, and they will come. And the rains fell, and they will fall. His house stood he said, well, brother, if, what if what I'm praying for and I still die from it? You got healed. Just not the way you wanted it. I'm not saying that everybody that dies, we, we, go, we walk around with this fatalist idea. But I'm just saying, sometimes God knows 
if I give them this healing, it's going to be temporary, and they're going to go right back into suffering at some point. When my grandmother was dying, that's what we prayed. Lord, we know you can heal her. She, you can give her to 125. I don't know how we'll deal with her, but you, we can do it. But, if, it, but if, if she's ready to go home, and you're ready for her to come on home, make it happen. I don't know what you're carrying. I don't know what you came expecting tonight. But I promise you this, if you're ready to receive, I believe I have delivered to you what God sent me to tonight to deliver about faith to get you on that road. Would you stand please? Father God, we thank you so much for your love, your mercy, your power, your grace, and your glory. And you said in your word that your word never returns back to you void. It does exactly what you intend for it to do. And right now, Lord, we have spoken the rhema word of God into people's lives. And if you're here tonight and you need prayer for any reason, I, I don't want... I'm holding in my hands here the flash drive that you can order free of charge from the ministry at pastorstansbury at gmail.com that contains all five sermons from the City View, including with no interruptions, no cuts, the complete unedited sermon. So if you're interested in, in ordering this, please let us know right here at pastorstansbury at gmail.com. Have a great day. Thank you for joining us right here today. Remember, you can always email me at pastorstansbury at gmail.com, and I'll answer every email personally and pray for you and your family. So until next week, this is Dr. Eric Stansbury, hoping that you're becoming that disciple that is a living letter to a dying world. And that this week, grace and peace will be multiplied to both you and your family. We will see you next week right here on Restoration Bible Fellowship.